Number 33. Suppose the length of a clock's pendulum is changed by 1%, exactly at noon one day. What time will it read 24 hours later, assuming the pendulum has kept perfect time before the change? Note there are two answers. All right. Um, so basically, what I want to do is I want to find uh, the relationship, okay, between the, let's say, old time and the new time. All right. So what I want to do is create a ratio out of this formula. So let me let me just write the formula down. So this is the period of the pendulum is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the length of the multiplied, excuse me, by the square root of the length of the pendulum's arm divided by the gravitational uh, acceleration. So what I want to do here is basically create a ratio using this formula, all right? So I want to do this. I want to find let's just say the uh, new period, right, relative to the old period is going to then be equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the new length divided by g divided then by the 2 pi times the square root of the old length divided by g. Notice how everything here is going to cancel in terms of the pi's and the g's. So basically I'm left with this relationship and this we found uh, before. All right, we just did it with the gravities though. Instead, this is the lengths that are changing. So this is the new period divided by the old period will be equal to the square root of the new length relative to the old length. Now, let's assume that, so it says that it's changed by 1%, right? The pendulum's changed by 1%. Well, what does that mean? Well, pretend I told you you have an item that costs $100 and you're gonna get 1% off. What are you gonna pay? You're gonna pay $99, right, for that item. Okay, simple. Now, so this is like saying this is the old price, right? And then this is like saying this is the new price. Does that make sense? So what I can do here, now it doesn't matter what number I start with. You could have chosen a dollar and then you would have been left with 99 cents. You could have chosen a thousand dollars and then you would have been left with $999. It doesn't matter. But if we notice what what's going on here, I know that the uh, new value, right, is basically going to be uh, 99% of the old value, right? Do you kind of see how that's working there, right? I just basically reset that. If I discounted, right, the $100 by 1%, I'm left with 99. In other words, the final value here was 99% of the initial value, okay? So that's the important relationship we need to consider. So in other words, that the, uh, that the old, or I can write something like this, that the new uh, I'll say value here, and then I'll, I'll, I'll say the, the uh, new value equals the old value, but not exactly, right? The new value, what we would have to do is take the old value and multiply it by 0.99, right? Just take a look at this. If I plugged in my old value of 100 and I multiply it by 0.99, wouldn't I get $99 for the new price? Sure. So this formula works, right? Instead of doing value, I'm just going to plug in length now. So this is the new length uh, would be equal to the old length multiplied by 0.99. It's the same thing. But now watch what happens here essentially, right? Watch. So now I'm going to plug in and substitute. So TN over TO. So the new period over the old period will equal the square root of the new length divided by then the old length, but instead of plugging in, actually, excuse me one second, what I'm going to do is since I solved this equation over here for the new length, all right, I'm simply going to take now this term and plug it on in for the new length. So that becomes now 0 0.99 all divided by then, well, LO times LO, right? All divided by LO, but notice what happens to the LOs. Bye-bye, see you later. So basically this is telling us that the new period Right, relative to the uh, old period, will be equal to the square root of 0 0.99, okay? Now let's calculate this. So let's get it. So we take the square root, right? The square root of 0 0.99. And what do we get? We get a value here of now 0 0.994, right? 0 0.994, well, five or so. Okay, well, actually, let's go out to 4 sig figs. So 0 0.9, well, if I go out to 5, it's just going to be 5, 0. Okay, so this is basically the uh, relative change, okay, in terms of the new uh, period versus the old period. In other words, if I put this over 1, 
right? If the new period, whatever the new, whatever the old period was, if the old period measured a second, okay, then the new period would measure 0.995 of a second. So you see how one second's going to be off by 0.995. Essentially, one second's going to be off by 99.5. Well, excuse me. Well, I have to take the subtraction. I'd have to subtract this. So the, yeah. So the, let me, let me write it that way. So this is good here, okay? But now if I wanted to kind of restate it, I'm basically saying that the new, so the new period will be off by one minus now the 0 0.9950. In other words, it would be off by 0 0.005013, 005013, okay? Now, technically speaking, when you take a square root of something, you get both the positive and negative answer. Because if you took this positive value and squared it, you would have gotten 0.99. And if you would have taken the negative value and squared it, you would have also gotten 0.99. So basically, that's the whole plus or minus part. That's why we're going to get two answers. Okay? So either a 1% change could have been maybe it slows the clock down right, by this amount. Or maybe it'll speed it up by this amount. That's the whole point of the plus minus. All right? So basically now, what I realize is that the clock is going to be off by 0.5 of a percent, because if I move that decimal two places over, that's 0.5. So plus or minus 0.5013%. Uh, 0 now, you don't even need the percent here. I'm just kind of telling it to you. We don't need it at all, okay? What's important that, and I'll write it up here on the left, if we slow it down, if the clock gets slowed down, slow down then what's going to happen is the period should be longer right the period of the the what it's tracking the second value if 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 the if the correct pendulum were to track exactly one second then the new pendulum's period should be slightly larger than one second does that kind of make sense right because you're going to look at the pendulum as it's swinging, and you're going to think when it makes one full swing that that was a second. But if this pendulum is actually taking longer than a true second to make it swing, well, then it's going to undercount the amount of seconds, right, in the 24 hours. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. I know this one's a little confusing. So you might have to rewind a little bit and just think about what, uh, you know, consider and really think about what's being said. So now, um, I might even have to do that myself, so I, I might be there with you. Um, so now, if it's slowed down, that means that the new period would be 1.005, and that's really it. I mean, this is now going to be four significant uh, figures. I'm just going to keep going out here a little bit. One, three, okay? That's going to be the new period if it's slowed down. If the pendulum is to be sped up, sped up, then the new period will be equal to a little less than a true second, right? It's going to be point, and that's actually what we found over here, right? I could have taken then one minus the percent change, which would have been, again, 0 0.9950, all right, of the original, okay? So now let's erase this work, and let's see now what we can calculate, all right? Hope you guys are having a good day. This problem might be... I don't know, putting a little cloud in your sky, right? A little, I don't know, for me it feels more like a hurricane, but, you know, what are you going to do? So now what we need to do is we're basically going to try to relate these now to the uh, actual amount of seconds that it's going to calculate, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to realize that we have 24 hours, so essentially here, let's let's draw, I think a little picture might help. Let's pretend that this is the true time. We have 24 hours here. 24 hours. Now, out of this 24 hours, or excuse me, sorry, this would be considered one day, right? Let's just consider this to be uh, one day. Now, within the one day, there's going to be exactly 24 hours, right? So I can break this up into 24 pieces. I'm not going to do that. But you you kind of get what I'm saying. So, And this is not proportional, by the way. All right. So here, let's just say that this represents then one hour. Okay. 
And then within that true hour, there's going to be 60 minutes, correct? Right, so I'm going to divide it again. And this is not proportional, okay? But within that one hour, there's going to be 60, 60 minutes. Or actually, well, there's 60 minutes, yes, but this length would be considered one minute, right? And then let's say now, last but not least, this minute here that is measured by that length would be then divided into seconds, right? So this length right here is going to represent the second, okay? A true second, one second. But now, if the time is slowed down, right, that means that this true second is not being measured exactly how you see it, right? The second, the pendulum here for the slowed down time is going to click here, let's just say. Instead of it, instead of the full pendulum making a swing, right? Here's the pendulum, and it's going to take a, an exact second. Let's say we start, uh, yeah, let's say it doesn't really matter. Let's say we start here, and it goes like this, right? That's one. Okay, in other words, you can think about it as going from top and then back to here. That would be one. Doesn't matter. The longer, when time is slowed down, then this second hand is going to take longer for it to rotate, right? And that would be one. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate here, though, with this picture. I'm saying that the when it's slowed down, the pendulum will hit here, let's just say, in terms of my time continuum. All right. Now the question is, well, how many of these longer seconds will there be in a full day? Okay. So how many, how many longer seconds will there be in 24 hours, AKA one day? Okay. In a true day. Well, remember, each second now is being, it's a little longer than a second, right? So first let's find out, first let's find out how many seconds there are in a day, okay? So first to answer this question, right over here that I'll put it in the box, the first thing we have to find out is how many actual seconds are there? How many, I'll call them real seconds, real seconds, are in a day, are in 24 hours. AKA, which is simply, right, this is going to be one day. So we can simply do that, right? You know how to do that. We're going to take basically one day, multiply it by, there's 24 hours in a day. There's going to be, and in an hour then, right, we can go to minutes. I'll do that for this problem. Uh, in one hour, there are 60 minutes. And then in one, in one minute, there's going to be 60 seconds. So the true number of seconds is going to be 24 times 60 times 60. So the true number of seconds in a day, 86,400 seconds in a true day, in 24 hours. Okay, this is the amount of true seconds. But now the thing is that we're going to basically be, we, we essentially have now this number not this number of seconds, but this is how long each second is, right? So essentially what I can think about here is I can think about that in a, in a, true, in a true day now. I would have to take this value, because that's in seconds. These are true seconds, so let me do this. So 86,400 seconds. And to get rid of the unit seconds, I'm going to then divide it now by this value. Because that, that this is the period, right? And this is really in seconds, more or less. Okay? So it's more of a ratio, but you can think about it that way. So basically, if time is slowed down now, we're going to divide this by 1.005013. And this now will get me, essentially, so let's do this. So this is 86,400 divided by then. I'm going to use the exact values here. So let me do one second. Parenthesis one plus then that small decimal value, close it. So we have now here, this is going to be about 85,969. 85, 85,969, I'll say slowed seconds, right? Or this would be the amount of uh, seconds now that would have that would have been registered on the slower pendulum, okay? So this is the number of seconds for the slower pendulum. 
And then how about for the faster pendulum? Well, I would have done it the same way. I would have taken the actual amount of seconds and then divided it basically by now the 0.995, okay? And let's find out what that is. So this is going to be 86,400 divided then by that exact value. Let me go grab it. So this works out to be about now 86,835, 835 seconds, okay? So, and this is now for this sped up, right? This is now sped up, sped up, okay? So essentially, if you were looking at the faster pendulum, you would have registered in a true hour, in a true, excuse me, in a true day, you would have measured this number of seconds, not the actual amount that should have been recorded, but you would have measured more. So what would have been the time then? Well, now what we can do is we can basically take this number of seconds and then convert it back into a time value, okay? So how are we gonna do that? Well, why don't we, you know how time's normally given and you have your hour, then you have your minute, and then you have your second, right? So I'm just gonna erase this part a little bit here, give myself a little more room. So what I have to do is figure out Basically, actually, well, what I can do now, actually, yeah, what, what I'm going to do now is basically say I can, I can do this a couple of ways, and that's kind of what makes this difficult. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the difference. Let me find the difference in these two amount, these amounts of seconds. I'm going to do it first for the um, slower time, okay? Let's find the difference. So we're going to take 86,400 actual seconds and then the minus by 85,969. So we would have found that uh, 86,400 minus 85,969, we would have found that it's approximately 431 seconds, okay, difference. And I probably should have used exact value, 86,400 minus then, let me go try to find that exact value. It's not really going to make that much of a difference. Yeah, I mean, point. it's really 430 0.9, okay? This would be the difference in the amounts of seconds, right? So the the slower clock would have registered would would have registered relative to the real clock would have registered this many less seconds. <laughs> that makes sense, right? This many less seconds. Now, if that's the amount of less seconds, how many, you know, what does this turn out to be in terms of minutes or, you know, how many how many minutes and seconds would that be, or fractions of a second we can think of? Well, we can basically take this value now, and we can simply uh, divide this now by, if I were to want to convert it into minutes, let's say, right, this is seconds, I can basically divide that by 60, right? So I know that 430.9 seconds, if I divide that by 60, would be now equal to, I'm just not doing, it's. Ba I'm basically doing dimensional analysis, but just not writing it all out. This now works out to be basically 7.182 minutes. Okay, that's great. So basically I have seven minutes, right? So basically it's off by seven and a fraction minutes. Okay, so let's, let's realize that now we have to do this. So basically what we have to do now is we have to take now the minute value. So we know it's seven minutes. And then we have now a fraction <clears throat> of a minute right, of 0.182 minutes. What I wanna do is convert this now into seconds, all right? So why don't we do that? So 0.182 now, 0.182 minutes is equivalent to how many seconds, more or less? So I can take that and multiply it now by 60, okay? I could have done this also a different way as well. Um, you know, I could have just subtracted out the 0.9 here and then done something uh, along that way, but I think this way is a little easier. So basically this works out to be now seven minutes, and then this fraction of minutes is really 10.92 seconds. Okay, so this is about 10.92. Now, a lot of this, a lot of this calculation depends upon the, because we're talking about so many seconds, and then a lot of this depends upon how you're calculating this. How many sig figs you're using, how many are you using exact or rounded values, et cetera. So if your answer, you get an answer that might be slightly, slightly different than this, don't worry, as long as you're in the ballpark of about seven minutes, let's say about 11, this is roughly about now 11 seconds, right? 10.92, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do this 11 seconds. As long as you're in this rough ballpark, seven minutes, 11 seconds, seven minutes, 12, 13, 15, 
you know, 16, 17, somewhere around there. If you start getting like six minutes and change or eight minutes, you're, you're, there's something going to be wrong or there's way too much rounding. So as long as you're in the ballpark here. So basically, this is how much slower the clock would have read, right? This is how much slower. So the clock would have read seven minutes and 11 seconds slower than it truly should have read. So what exactly does that mean? Well, that means now when the clock is slowed down, you're going to think if the clock is registering every pendulum swing, the clock now in 24 hours is not going to register this number of actual seconds, right? And minutes. So basically, at 12, at 24 hours later, right? If you're thinking about, you're talking about noon one day. So 24 hours later, the clock would read then 11 hour. it would be 11 a 11 hours then you'd have to take 60 and minus by 7 so 60 minus by 7 which would be 53 11 hours 53 minutes or actually it would be 52 minutes so 52 minutes and then approximately how many seconds well again you would subtract basically 11 from 60 and you realize it's about uh, 49 or so, right? So this is going to be 49 seconds. So if you notice here, this time is about seven minutes, right? And 11 seconds behind the true time that should have read, and this is AM, right? This is AM. Uh, it's going to measure slightly behind uh, the actual time, which should have been noon, exactly 12 noon, all right? So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now, conversely, it would have been then if I wanted to find the faster time, all I got to do is now take this amount that we're off by and just add it to the 12. So that's a lot easier now considering how to think about it. So this would have been slower. And then the faster clock would have read uh, 12 hours, 7 minutes, and 11 seconds. Okay. So now that my brain is completely fried here, and uh, I'm sure yours is as well, just take the rest of the day off, honestly. Just, just, just take the day off. <laughs> All right. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.